Psalms 114, and I'll try the best I can. I don't know all the scriptures. When Israel went out of Egypt, that was the book of Exodus, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language. So the Egyptian tongue. There was a strange language to the Israelites. It wasn't a strange language when they were in Babylon. According to Ezra and Nehemiah, they knew the language. Matter of fact, they couldn't speak, not very well could they speak the Hebrew language in Ezra and Nehemiah. So in Babylon, they got settled in. In Egypt, there was still a, a, a difference. Judah was his sanctuary. And that would be Jerusalem later on. Jerusalem is in the Judean area, which is really given to Benjamin. A, a, a city that God will call out for himself, where the, where the tabernacle finally came to a rest, becoming the temple built by Solomon. And Israel, his dominion, authority. If anybody wanted to know anything about God, they were supposed to go to the nation of Israel. Israel is that light. You know, Christians say, oh, we're, we're light of the world. That was supposed to be Israel. Jerusalem was to be the center part of the whole entire world. And that's not going to happen when the Lord Jesus Christ comes and sit up on David's throne. Israel had the law of what God wanted to know. When Naaman had leprosy, he didn't go to anybody but God. The nation of Israel. He may not completely understood, but he knew there was some kind of light there in Israel. There was a prophet told to him by that little servant girl. Who else did God reveal himself to? No one but Israel. Listen, it... England has sent out missionaries all over the world. That's done. America is sending out missionaries all over the world. Guess what? That's going to be done. You want to see what America is like? Look at England. You know, the way our children walk on the street is nothing compared when you see the pictures of the English children walking on the street. I mean, they got porcupine hairdos and mohawks left and right. And they're the nation of the King James Bible. We were a nation that brought, the pilgrims brought the Geneva Bible, the Bible of blood of the saints. Nine years after the King James Bible. And we're failing just as quick. It's like England, we rejected the word of God, the King James Bible. The sea saw it. The Red Sea. Exodus 14, and fled. It, it broke open. It gave them a path. Jordan, Joshua 3, 13 and 16, was driven back. It opened up for Joshua. Two bodies of water opened up for Moses and Joshua. Later on, Jordan is going to open up for Elijah and Elisha. The mountains skip like rams. Well, I don't know about that. And, and the little hills like lambs. I have no idea. Now, the passage is the millennium. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes back with Judah and Israel, the earth is going to change shape. But other than that, I don't know. Oh, kind of poetry kind of thing? I don't know. What aileth thee, O thou sea, that thou fleddest? Why did the Red Sea open up? Thou Jordan, that thou, thou, thou wast driven back. 
because God proclaimed to Moses and God proclaimed to, to uh, Joshua, the water shall separate and you shall go forth on dry land. It was a commandment of God. That's why it did it. You know, everything in nature that God commanded happened. God told an ass to, to preach a message to Balaam. The ass spoke. Jesus stepped onto a, uh, into a coat of an ass that had never been ridden before and went right on to Jerusalem. Now, I am told those who, who, do the, who, who, uh, who handle those kind of animals that you just don't hop on a donkey and get going. You'll get going, but your butt will be in the dirt, I am told, if not your face. God told some birds, some ravens, and said, I want you to feed one of my prophets food. God told all the animals, husband and wife, start going to the ark with no GPS, no thing. There are birds that are up north. They fly all the way down south and end up back where they were, their babes and all that. And God tells them. There's a fish up north. They come down south. They lay their eggs. And the adults go. And those little fishies go back up north for exactly where their parents are. have never been there before. God told a lion, he says, I want you to eat this prophet, but not the donkey he's on. So when they came by, there was a lion full, and there was a donkey sitting right by him. And the prophet, dead. They didn't eat him. They had a chunk of them, maybe. But when God tells man to do something, what happens? Jesus said many will go in the way of death and hell through the broad way. Few will go through the narrow path. And yet, the Bible says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. He didn't die for dogs. He didn't die for elephants. He didn't die to save the whales. Yet, yeah, but when a whale had a Jonah burger, God says, uh, spit him out. And the whale didn't sit there and have a debate with him. Well, he's delicious, Lord. He's mine. Uh, spit him out. No, he's good. You know, have someone else, Lord. There was no conflict between God and the whale. But how many days before that episode was there a conflict between Jonah and God? How about when Peter's fishing at night? And he fishes all night long and God tells the fish, you stay on the right side of the boat. Don't you go over there. And they fished the whole night and they didn't catch nothing. And Jesus comes along and says, fish on the right side. Yeah, but Lord, we toiled all night. Peter's fighting with Jesus. And Jesus said, let down the net with an S. He lets down a net. And almost breaks the thing. And God says to the fish, okay, now jump into that net. And they don't fight God. We're going, you know, we're, jumping, we're going to die. In a, get in that. In that no. The fish stayed on the right side of the boat, and then when it was come time, the fish got into the net. Man, Peter did not do what Jesus Christ told him to do. Ye mountains that skipped like rams. Now, verse 6 is past tense from verse 4. And ye hills like lambs. Again, I, I have no idea. I think it's a second advent passage. Tremble thou earth at the presence of the Lord. Now that is second advent. 
Listen, the earth did not have an earthquake when Jesus came the first time he was born a baby in the manger. What earthquake was recorded? No ge geological changes happened when Jesus. The only thing that really was a miracle of nature was that star. Oh, no, that wasn't the that wasn't his baby's turn. You're not reading the Bible correct. The star came with the Magi, and the Magi, he's about two years old, if not a little older, and he's in a house. So that wasn't the first advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. What miracle was when Jesus Christ came at his first coming? You can't say the virgin birth because that had already happened. Nothing. The earth, was, the earth did not tremble at, at his first coming. It's going to tremble at his second coming as he comes back on horseback as a lion, angry with a sword coming out of his mouth, the word of God. And man is praying that the rocks and hills and mountains will fall on them. That's maybe where four and six comes comes into play. At the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. Well, you think America has a claim on the God? And God we trust. Which one? Check the yellow pages. You better have the God of Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham. You better have the God that made Adam and Eve. There's a God out there that made a, 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 an Adam and Steve. That's not the proper God. There's a God out there that made an Eve and a Louise. That ain't the proper God. There's a God out there that, that says shed blood for salvation. That's not the God of the Bible. That's not the God of Jacob. Matter of fact, when he called Abraham to do that with Isaac, he stopped it from happening. He didn't allow Abraham to kill his son. Which turned the rock into standing water. Numbers 20, Exodus 17. The flint into a fountain of waters. And that's that rock that turned into water, which Paul says is Jesus Christ. All right, let's read it. Seven again. Let's watch the English. Tremble thou earth at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the God of Jacob. Semicolon. No period. Which? What? Which what? Here, mark that in my Bible. Which? Who is the witch here? The God of, the, of Jacob, the Lord. Which turned the rock into standing water. The flint into a fountain of waters. And Paul says that's the Lord Jesus Christ. The God of Jacob made the rock the standing water. Verse 7, the God of Jacob. That's God, Jehovah. Verse 8, the Lord Jesus Christ. At the presence of the Lord... There's the Holy Spirit. There's the Trinity right there in, in 7 and 8. 7 complete. 8, a new beginning. The Bible just told you what, what God did. He, he made a rock. When you ever hear water come out of a rock, especially a flinty rock, he performed that miracle as the waters that were divided of the Red Sea and the waters that were divided of Jordan. Here are waters 
of something that water should never came of, and which is Jesus Christ. The whole chapter is about the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came from Judah, verse 2. That's all I can explain on this chapter. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great. And when I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee.